Now, many people were hoping this week's budget would bring them some relief in a very difficult economic time. Since it was announced, community and business seem to be split on what they think. Joining me live is Master Builders Australia CEO, Danita Warren. Danita, welcome to the program. What about builders? Uh, they've had a torrid old time the past few years since COVID. What's the report card out of the budget? Good morning, Tim. Well, the builders wanted some level of uh, certainty. They wanted reduction in costs and they wanted uh, increasing capacity. We got a little bit of it, uh, but holistically, not so great. So in terms of the good stuff, uh, skills, a lot of support for apprentices, uh, a great deal of support for um, ensuring that we are skilling our tradespeople up. Uh, so a big tick there. The government also heard us in respect to uh, ensuring that migrants in this country that are underutilised, that could be working in building, are actually going to be supported through their skills assessment and a great package about women in male-dominated areas. On the housing front, some really good stuff in terms of social housing, community housing. Uh, but the concern that we've got is that um, if we're going to build the 1.2 million homes that the government has committed us to, then we need to ensure that we have private investment in housing, whether that's the owner-occupier, whether that's the small investor or whether that's the large investor. And they're not in the market at the moment because of inflation, because of interest rates and because of the challenges of building at the moment, including delays and so forth. So we would have liked to have seen more, but a big tick to the housing minister, a big tick to the skills minister. So what would you like to see, Danita? It's, it is a housing crisis, whether we look at people trying to buy a house for the first time, we try to look at people trying to rent a place. It's just difficult every angle. What would you like to see? Well, Tim, it's all about supply. It's the supply of housing. Uh, it's as simple as that. It's a problem that's been decades in the making. We don't blame this government, but we do recognise that they have uh, said that we need to resolve supply. Our concern is that they are not pulling all the right policy levers in the right direction to get the outcome. So we know, for example, that we need to urgently uh, solve our approvals process. We know that's a state and territory uh, responsibility. We know there's a bit of money on the table uh, from the federal government to assist them on things like critical infrastructure, but we do think more needs to be done in that space. Uh, we need um, more people and it's great that we've been able to focus on skilling Australians but equally we need a freed up skilled migration system that focuses on tradies. Uh, we also need to ensure that we have smarter planning and zoning that enables us to go up as well as out and we also need a better industrial relations system and, and kudos to the opposition leader who recognised that the significant changes made by this federal government um, have a handbrake on productivity and means that it takes us longer and it's more expensive than build, to build. So we've also got to look at workplace relations reform as well. We've got to backtrack on what's been occurring over the last 18 months, particularly with the removal of the ABCC, particularly with the curtailing of independent contractors. Uh, there is more debate in those spaces over the next 12 months as we lead into the election. You've touched on it a few times. Where are we at with workforce shortages, of course, uh, highlighted by the pandemic, but that's almost a couple of years now. Yeah, materials are fine, but work place shortages, just workforce shortages just continue to become worse. Uh, we lose 8% of the workforce every year, but only replace it with 4%. Part of that is because of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the baby boomers, but part of it is because we've got to do better in our culture. But we need more people. We're estimating another half a million new entrants over the next three or four years. Build Skills said the other day we need, which is an agency of government, 90,000 new tradies in 90 days to meet the 1.2 million. Uh, these are huge, huge numbers of the current workforce of 1.3 million. And so we've got to do every effort we can 
to get people back into the industry, encourage them into the industry. And I'm still really concerned that um, our education system simply does not comprehend the opportunities there for our kids. Uh, someone was telling me the other day they were going to a builder, going to spruik the great thing about the industry, encourage apprentices, wrote to 45 high schools in his area. Only eight got back to him mm. interested in him coming and talking about trades. Huge opportunities for people of all ages. Uh, and, of course, we, we've got to encourage half the working population, and that is women to the industry and it was it's been great to talk about women this week at a big lunch yesterday and seeing some amazing uh female tradies really trying to lead the charge in that space oh and they, they play such women play such an important role don't they in in the building industry building women's careers program i know that you've welcomed that of of course at every level from from management all the way to the tools Absolutely. It's uh, the stories I heard yesterday and we hear them around the country all the time. We've got a fantastic program, Women Building Australia. It's been going now for five years. Uh, we undertake mentoring, attend careers expos, really trying to get pe women to understand the opportunities there. And it's interesting, in our recent uh, publication, we talked about the fact that the majority of entrants into the building and construction industry for women are actually those over 30. They're looking at it as a new career opportunity. A lot of them want to set up their own businesses because of the flexibility you have of being your own mm. boss. And that's why we were scathing of the new uh, independent contracting provisions that came through in February that have yet to be implemented in law. The start, Sorry, that have yet to start. And that's of concern to us. Finally, uh, on a bright note, it's an industry that all Australians should be very proud of, isn't it, um, the building industry? We do some remarkable work in this country. Every single building we walk into is built by our builders, our tradies, uh, the professionals that support them. It is quite extraordinary what we do in this country. We have, despite our frustrations, one of the best um, building codes in terms of safety and well-being of the people that utilise buildings, and we should be proud of it. And it's a, an amazing industry. I've now worked in it for seven years. I've got family that have worked in it for a number of generations. I can't think highly enough of it. I know I'm encouraging my boys to get into the industry. Whether they do or not, it's another question, but huge opportunities that we're encouraging people to do so. And, and as our population grows, there's more to do. And I don't know about you, Tim, but I think AI is, AI is not going to be taking over um, the building of a, of a school or a house anytime soon. So there's still jobs there for those that don't know about us. Oh, absolutely. My brother-in-law's a builder. We've got it in our family. and They're fantastic. Uh, I, I, I sometimes am in awe because I'm so hopeless with anything mechanical or beyond uh, probably talking. It's, uh, it's quite an extraordinary uh, talent that they do have. Uh, Danita, always good to chat and uh, let's talk soon. Excellent. Thanks, Tim, and good weekend, everyone.